Thanks to everybody for tuning in to the Mount Sinai Missionary Baptist Church of Memphis YouTube channel. Uh, because you have chosen wisely to seek understanding and discernment, I pray that God will do for you what he did for King Solomon and give you uh, what you've asked for and for much more. Uh, let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, thank you for your mercy and your grace. Uh, what we don't know, we ask that you would teach us. What we are not, we ask that you would make us through your word. And what we don't have, we ask that you would give us. In the all-knowing name of Jesus Christ, your Son, we pray. Amen. Today, we're going to study from Mark chapter 4, verse 35 through 41. That's Mark chapter 4, verse 35 through 41. And we might spend uh, two or three weeks here. Uh, Going to talk about peace in a storm. And you, you, from previous Thursday night Bible studies, uh, we've been talking about peace lately. And uh, tonight we're going to about, talk about uh, peace in a storm. Last week we talked about peace in times like these. And we are going to... Uh, some type of storm with the uh, uh, COVID-19 virus and all of the injustice and all of the violence that's going on in the United States and around the world. Uh, it's like a storm is going on in our lives. So tonight we're going to talk about peace in a storm. Our text reads Mark uh, chapter 4 verse 35 through 41. Uh, on that day, when evening had come, he said to them, let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd, they took him with them in the boat, just as he was. And other boats were with him. And a great windstorm arose, and the waves were breaking into the boat so that the boat was already filling. But he, speaking of Jesus, was in the stern, asleep on a cushion. And they awoke him and said to him, Teacher or master, do you not care that we are perishing? And he awoke and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace be still. And the wind ceased and there was a great calm. And he said to them, Why are you so afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great fear and said one to another, Who then is this man that even the wind and the sea obey him? Again, that was from the from Mark chapter four, verse thirty-five through forty-one, and I read from the King from the uh, uh, English Standard Version. Um, we're talking about peace in a storm. The text says that the same day, uh, which refers to the day that Jesus gave the parable of the kingdom. He had, he had been teaching and teaching and teaching. And uh, this was following uh, his parable of the kingdom. He had been teaching his disciples and now he will give them a practical test or life lesson uh, to see how much they had learned. Je Jesus wanted them to know that hearing God's word is intended to produce faith. As uh, Paul taught in Romans chapter 10, verse 17, it says, So then, faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Faith must always be tested. It is not enough for just uh, us to learn a lesson or be able to repeat a teachings or quote scripture. We must also be able to practice the lessons by faith. And this is one reason why God permits trials and storms and tribulations to come into our lives. Now, normal question for his disciples uh, is, uh, uh, did Jesus know that the storm was coming when he asked them uh, or invited them to go to the other side? In order to get to the other side, they had to go across uh, the, the, the waterway. And surely Jesus knew, or at least they were wondering, why would he bring us out here? 
Didn't he know that there was going to be a storm? Does he know what we're going to, what we were thinking 10 minutes ago is our question? Does he know what we go through? Does he have the kind of compassion to care about what we go through? The book of Hebrews makes a profound statement. It says, and he was tempted in all the ways that we are, yet without sin. He knows exactly what we're going through. And he knows before we get even close to it, what we're going to go through. And sometimes it might appear that he's inviting us to go into some of those places, some of those storms. The storm was a part of that day's curriculum that Jesus was teaching his disciples. It would help the disciples uh, un to understand a lesson that they did not even know they needed to learn. And a lot of times there are lessons in life that we don't know we need to learn that Jesus teaches us so that we can learn the lesson. Jesus can be trusted in the storms of life because he's all-knowing, all-powerful, and he will be with us. He's omnipresent. Many people have the idea that storms come in their lives only when they have disobeyed God, but that's not always the case. Jonah, for instance, in the Old Testament, ended up in a storm because of his disobedience, and the storm led, to jo led Jonah's to being obedient to God. So storms can have a profound good effect, even though they uh, might show up when we are because of our disobedience. It can lead us to obedience to God. Now, the disciples got into the storm because of their obedience to the Lord. Jesus uh, invited them to go to the other side with him. He didn't say, you all go to the other side. He said, let's go to the other side. Now, the geographical location of the Sea of Galilee in which the storm occurred is in a place where sudden violent storms are not unusual. And, and, and we ought to be to the point now where we accept the fact that some violent storms are not unusual in our lives. Uh, just like storms can come up at any time and especially when we're not expecting them, the storm described here must have been uh, especially fierce if it frightened the experienced fishermen like the disciples. There were at least three good reasons why none of the men in the ship should have been disturbed, even though the situation appears to be life-threatening. To begin with, they had Jesus' promise that they were going to the other side. His commandment in Mark 4, 35 is let's go to the other side. His commandments are always uh, filled with his security and nothing can stop his plan from working. If he planned to go to the other side, not a storm in the midst of the sea where they had to go through to get to the other side. Nothing could keep them or hinder them from getting to the other side. He did not promise an easy trip, but he did promise a guaranteed arrival at their destination. If Jesus told them they were going to the other side, they didn't have to worry about making it to the other side. The second thing is the Lord himself was with them. So what was there to fear? They had already seen his power demonstrated in his miracles. So they should have had complete confidence that he could handle this situation. We ought to have complete confidence that Jesus is able to handle any situation that come up in our lives because we have the proof that he's able from previous situations that he's handled, from previous storms that he's come in our lives. We've experienced Jesus working wonders in our lives. We've experienced him making ways out of no way. 
We know that he can be a bridge over troubled waters. We know he can calm our fears and he's well able to calm the storms in our lives. For some reason, the disciples did not yet understand that he was indeed the master of every situation. And then finally, they could see that Jesus was perfectly at peace, Woo! even in the midst of the storm. That fact alone should have encouraged them. Jesus was in God's will and knew that the father would care for him. So he took a nap. Too often we lay awake worrying about situations that Jesus can handle. And we ought to be able to come, be confident. Uh, uh, we ought to feel we have the evidence that, that, that the psalmist knew from experience in Psalm 21 that, uh, that, that we are in good hands. Psalms 121 verse 1 uh, through the entire Psalms, it says, I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. Even in a storm, we ought to remember and be conscious of where our help comes from. Verse two says, my help comes from the Lord, not the mountain. My help comes from the mount, from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. He made the mountain and he will not suffer or allow my foot to be moved. He will not allow the situation or the storm that I'm going through to tear me up, to get the best of me. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, look at Jesus and what he does in our lives. He that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade, thy, thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. And he shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth, even forevermore. For years, I laid awake night after night worrying about what might happen. And most of the time, it never happened. But then I learned that if Jesus is going to stay awake, keeping me secure, keeping me from dangers, I might as well get some sleep. And now, mostly every night, I ask the Lord to give me a good night's sleep, and he does just that. Jonah slept during the storm because he had a false sense of security, even though he was running from God. But Jesus slept in the storm because he was truly secure in God's will. Psalms 4 and 8 says, I will both lay me down in peace and sleep for thou, Lord, will, will, will uh, only you makes me dwell in safety. How often in the trials of life uh, we are likely to uh, imitate the faithless disciples and cry out, Lord, don't you care? Don't you care about what we're going through? We're in the storm. Don't you care that we, it, it looks like we are about to perish. We're about to lose our lives. Don't you care? Of course he cares. He rose, he, he, he got up and rebuked the storm and immediately there was a great calm. And Jesus, all he has to do is just speak the word. And our situations, our storms will cease. They will become calm. But Jesus did not stop with the calming of the storm. The greatest danger was not the wind or the waves. It was the unbelief in the hearts of his disciples. And our greatest problem is within us, not around us. This explains why Jesus gently rebuked them and called them men of little faith. They had heard him teach the word and had even seen him perform miracles. And yet they still had little or no faith. 
It was their unbelief that caused their fear. And their fear made them question whether Jesus really cared. Hebrews 3 and 12 says, and this is a warning to the church even today, not just the Hebrew. It says, warn us to beware of an evil heart of unbelief. We are warned to be aware, to be careful that we don't allow an evil heart of unbelief to go unchecked. This was only one of the many lessons that Jesus would teach his disciples in the familiar environment of the Sea of Galilee. And each lesson would reveal some wonderfully new truth about Jesus, our Lord. Now, they already knew that he had the authority to forgive sins and to cast out demons and to heal the diseases. Now, they discovered that he even had authority over the wind and the sea. This meant that they had no reason ever again to be afraid for their Lord Jesus was in constant control of every situation. First Peter 5 and 7, and this is the Living Bible version, it says, let him have all your worries and cares, for he is always thinking about you and watching everything that concerns you. So we should never wonder whether Jesus cares whether we live or die, whether we survive or fail. And what a great purpose for this storm in his disciples' lives. And what a great purpose does Jesus achieve when he allows storms to come into our lives. They serve to stir us up to ask the question, what manner of man is this? Jesus proved again that he is the Messiah and calming the storms would do three things. It would demonstrate who he is, the sovereign Lord who has all power, even power over nature. We're just coming off of the the uh, uh, arrival on uh, uh, the in the Gulf Coast and, and hidden uh, Texas and Louisiana of uh, Hurricane Laura. But before the time began, the Lord knew how to handle it, and He allowed knew how to how how much to uh, allow it to do. He may not keep the storms from coming but he does control the outcome of the storms in our lives. He's sovereign. Now, the second thing is the storms would strengthen the belief of his followers. It would strengthen their belief in him as the Messiah and his personal care as their savior. And the storms in our lives should Uh, do the same for us. Strengthen our belief in Jesus and strengthen our belief in him as our Messiah and his personal care as our Savior. The last thing is it would give all generations a picture of his care and power to deliver through all the storms of life. It does not matter what uh, the storm or the trial or the tribulation is or how terrifying it might be, Jesus is able to deliver and bring about the most assuring calm. Few trials could be as terrifying as being caught in a life-threatening storm at sea. In this experience, God has demonstrated his wonderful care and power to deliver us through any and all of our storms in life. And if that was not enough, he laid down his life, 
He gave his life on an old rugged cross on a hill called Calvary. They buried him and his disciples showed their lack of faith in him again when they left him and went back to what they were doing prior to him calling them. And that's not where the story ends even. Because he rose from the grave and told old death to behave. He rose with all power in heaven and in earth in his hands. And now there should be no room for unbelief in our midst. Let us pray. Lord, since the Holy Spirit measures out all the faith that we need for each day's journey, including the faith needed in storms. We ask that you would now help our unbelief by helping us to trust you no matter how things are looking. In Jesus' name, in his powerful name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us for another Bible study. I pray that God will give you understanding of what I've tried to say that your faith will increase. And last but not least, wear your mask. Practice social distancing of at least six feet or more. They, 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 they're changing it again. Maybe it takes more, but at least six feet. And then wash your hands as often as possible. And the peace and love of God be with you. Always. So long. Until next time. Bye bye.